hello everyone this is Rushira. welcome to my channel my today's video is going to be on decision tree algorithm the decision tree algorithm is very popular because it has shown good efficiency in a lot of data sets and also it is very easy to explain so here you can see a picture okay i just downloaded this picture from google uh, this is a very classic example of a binary classification see here we have three variables weather humidity and wind first it takes weather that has three different values sunny cloudy and rainy if it's sunny then it goes to humidity the second variable if the value is high then no and if the value is normal then yes so we get our decisions so as this is the binary classification I mentioned before, so it has only yes and no two values in the target variable. When the weather is cloudy, it's only yes. The only one side, there is no no to it. And when it's rainy, it goes to this third variable called wind. And if wind is strong, then no. And wind is weak, then it's yes. You can see that in decision tree algorithm, so it doesn't need too much mathematics to explain it to somebody. Yeah, it's very simple that way. But how this variable, this weather variable went to the top, the first variable, how this humidity and wind came in the second level, there are some mathematics behind that. And I'm not going to deep dive into that. If you're interested, please feel free to check the link in the description box below. I have a blog post on that. I showed the mathematics in details in that blog post. Today's video is going to focus mainly on the code. We will use decision tree algorithm for classification today. Also, we will demonstrate how to use grid search CV method to search the best parameters in scikit-learn library. So let's go to my Jupyter notebook where I worked on a decision tree algorithm for classification. Okay, let's dive in. First, I imported pandas and numpy library. We may not use numpy. Uh, this is the data set heart failure clinical records data set. I have the link to the data set in the description box below. Please feel free to download. So I used pd.readcsv method to create a data frame using this CSV file. And this is the df.head. You can see the data set. We have age, anemia, creatinine, phosphokinase, diabetes, and all these other variables. And at the end, we have death event and this is what we are going to predict today using the decision tree algorithm and look at this here df.deathevent.value counts is going to give you the unique values and the number of time they occurred in the data set so we have zero and one as death event and we have 203 times zero and 96 times one so as we are going to predict the death event, this is going to be our target variable today. And we are going to use rest of these other variables to predict the death event. So rest of these variables are going to be our training features. Now, this is very important and I do this almost, not almost, every time. I do this literally every time that is check for the null values in the data set because if you have null values we are going to get errors df dot is an a dot sum is going to give you the number of null values on each variable so you can see that we have a zero null values in all the variables so data set is very clean so that's Kaggle. I got this data set in Kaggle lots of time you can get this really nice and clean data set for practice here what we are doing just defining x and y x is the training features so as we mentioned already before that except for this death event rest of them they are all training features so from this df if we just drop death event we get our training features that's what we did df dot drop columns death event and as death event is our target variable if from df we just grab death event that's our target variable y df dot death event and then train test split we do not use all the data we have for training after training we need to evaluate our model so for evaluation purpose we need to keep some of the data separate so for that we use train test split method from scikit-learn dot model selection 
and here is how we do it a string x train x test y train y test train test split method we pass x y that we just defined and test size is 0 0.4 that means 40 percent of the data will be separated for testing purpose or evaluation purpose and then random state 44 you can use 40 4 or 0 or 5 i mean any or 5 i mean any integer of your choice the reason we use random state actually in my one of my previous videos in the comment section somebody asked why we need random state the reason we need random state is if you want to split this same data set again the same way if you do not use random state the separation will be different the x, x test and x train they are going to be different but if you use a random state what will happen if you want if you need to split it in the same way again you can simply use the random state of the same value you will get the same split the data set is ready now the model development part first you import the decision tree classifier from sklearn.3 and then i call decision tree classifier method and i save it in this dt this variable and look i didn't put any parameters here that means i actually accepted all the default parameters and then we fit x train and y train the training data from here in the dt training is done now evaluation let's see first i wanted to see how our model performs on the training data itself and you can see 1.0 that means we get 100 percent accuracy score this dt dot score it gives you the accuracy how much accurate your model can predict so on training data you can see that it can predict pretty much 100 percent accurate let's test on the test data that we kept separated we didn't use in the training in test data we get 0 0.70 that means 70 percent so look at it how different they are it performed so well 100 percent accurate on the training data but it didn't do as well on the test data which we don't want we want it to do as well on the test data right we want the model to perform the same with training data and testing data we want it to generalize right so that we can use it for prediction when this happened we call it overfitting uh, if you watched my last video where i actually explained overfitting in details when we get much higher accuracy score in training data than testing data we call it overfitting and when it happens you actually need to try different methods different parameters so that we can solve this overfitting issues okay so for today as we are going to do the decision tree classifier only we are going to try on different other parameters i call the decision tree classifier again and this time i am passing max depth equals to eight there are other parameters as well but i i'm going to use max depth because it, this is one of the most important uh, parameters i like to use it so dt1.fit then x train and y train the same process as before and then i'm going to check the accuracy score of training and testing data the way we did here and look this time we got one or miss 100 percent in the training data again and we got 75.83 percent accuracy on test data which is better than before but still the difference is a lot right so we should try harder we should try more parameters right for that i'm going to use this grid search cb method what is grid search cb look we tried with max depth eight here i want to try with max depth of three four five nine ten lots of other ones right and also i want to try other parameters like here i'm using max leaf nodes that's also another important parameter i want to try on different values as well and if i keep doing it one by one that can get boring isn't it 
So using the, this grid search CD, I can pass a lot of these numbers, a lot of these values at the same time, and a lot of the parameters as well. The grid search CV method can find out the best values for these parameters for this training data. What do we have to do for this? So DT2, this time I'm going to use this variable and decision reclassifier method. I will call the grid search CV method and you can see the parameters here what I did. I already used max depth of 8 and now I want to try max depth of 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. I want to try another parameter max lift nodes and I want to try 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, all these values one by one. So instead of trying one by one, I am going to use this grid search CV method. So grid search CV, I have to pass the machine learning algorithm I'm going to use and also I need to pass the parameters I want to try. And then fit X train and Y train into this DT again. And you can see it tried on all of this. Finally, let's see the accuracy score on training and test data. Okay, this time you see the training data, we have accuracy of 86% and test data, we have the accuracy of 82.5%. So you can see the accuracy score is much lower than before but on test data is much higher. So that's what we want actually, because we do not want our model to learn the training data so well that it cannot perform well on other data. We want our model to find a pattern in the training data so that it can perform well on test data or other data as well. Okay, so that's what we wanted to achieve and it is pretty close. If you want to see the parameters that our grid search CV found out of all these parameters we passed, this is what it is dt2 dot best params, so max depth of three and max leaf nodes of two. These are the best parameters out of all these parameters for this training data. And finally, the confusion matrix. I always check the confusion matrix in a classification problem because I do not think the accuracy score alone is a good metric for a classification problem. So for so from sklearn.matrix we imported confusion matrix. You have to find the label, the predicted label for the test because first I will check the confusion matrix for the test data. I called dd3.predict and I pass the X test, then we find confusion matrix and we have to pass the true label, Y test, and then the predicted label, Y pred, that we calculated here. And this is what the confusion matrix look like. Here is another trick. Sometimes when it's like this, you may not know, or you may not remember, or you can be confused about which one is true negative, which one is false negative, which one is false positive, especially these two. Sometimes you can be confused. So this is what I do, true negative, false positive, false negative, and true positive. Confusion matrix, you exactly use the same. And then dot ravel. So that's what will give you a total flattened result. So it's much clearer, isn't it? You can see that our true negative, we have 73 and true positive 26. I want to do one more thing. We knew this is what it was. We had death event total of 0, 203 times and 196 times, right? I want to try the confusion matrix on the total data. So, y pred total, then dt3 dot predict i pass the x our total training features all of them and then i want to find the confusion matrix for the total data so i pass y because i used x here so i have to pass y the true label and y pred total that we just calculated dot ravel this time this is what we get and now you check 
we had total of two or three negative data, right? And our model could calculate, uh, our model could estimate 100 many of them accurately, which is, I believe, pretty good. And then we had 96 ones or positive data, and then the model got 63 of them right. And then we have 13 false positive and 33 false negative. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And I will see you soon.